Hey Greg, this is my son's PC and we put it together for him and we got the parts used from my brother. Video card, RAM, and processor Core i7-9700, except the motherboard. We bought that online used on eBay and it was working good until these past two weeks we noticed that when we started Windows it would shut down right away and I would press the power button and nothing. I reconnected everything, but nothing. The only thing that stays on is the RGB from the board, but nothing powers on. Hopefully if you see our PC, maybe you can figure out what might have gone wrong. This here is that viewer's broken gaming PC. And she's a bit of a sleeper. I imagine most folks opening this case up for the first time aren't expecting what's inside. This platform, while not new, definitely outclasses the case itself. This is an old Dell OEM case and uh, definitely misleads anyone on the outside into thinking that it's actually a lot worse for gaming than it really is. And while the platform might not be the most up-to-date, a 9th gen Core i7 is, well, it's not the newest, the latest, the best, the most powerful. We do have an RTX graphics card in here and a CX 750M power supply. So I think this was built with uh, actually a fairly decent balance in mind. But if she isn't powering on, that is a bit of a problem. We're gonna try to fix it in this video. Are you ready? Stay with me. If you're sick of seeing that same Activate Windows watermark over and over, head on over to VIP SCD Key, where they have Windows 10 and 11 Pro OEM keys at a fraction of the price of retail. Just use the secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say goodbye to the watermark. And be sure to use your offer code SKGS for that so sweet discount. Hello there, and welcome to season five of Fix or Flop. The season part's a bit arbitrary. We don't really have much of a gap between seasons in most cases, but that's because we still have so many computers in the queue waiting to be fixed, and this one is no exception. And for those who don't know, in Fixer Flop, we offer to fix viewer systems for free without charging for labor, without charging for replacement parts. In exchange, we get to film videos like these and post them on sites like YouTube. That's how I make my money. Of course, I'm not gonna offload any of that charge to the owner who's already gracious enough to loan us the system in question for at least a few days. So if you have a broken computer, maybe it doesn't power on, or maybe it does, but it doesn't send a signal to your monitor, something along those Lines, be sure to fill out a form linked in the video description. If you are an Orlando, Florida local, those are the ones we're really uh, honing in on this season and we have historically as well because I prefer to see systems in person, take them home myself and then drop them back off in person. It's just liability nightmare when you have to deal with shipping and that's why we have ignored many of those who have insisted on applying to be featured in Fixer Flop despite not living anywhere near us. Let's shift our attention then to this bad boy here. Um, apparently it lights up, you can see LEDs on the motherboard and things, but it does not officially power on via the power button up front. I'm curious if there's an issue with the power button in this older case that could have gone bad, or maybe we have a bigger problem on our hands. As a part of this rig story that I haven't mentioned yet, and it's because it wasn't initially included in the description that I read you at the beginning of this video. When I met the owner of this rig in a Burger King parking lot, he told me that the CPU, I think it was also the RAM and the graphics card, if I'm not mistaken, were pulled from his brother's old rig that involved a motherboard shorting to the case. Apparently he didn't use the correct standoffs in the right places, and so when he powered the system on, the motherboard shorted and fried. The other components apparently still worked, and that's what he ended up giving to his brother. Now that brother's son is the owner of this. Um, it doesn't mean, though, that just because they work right after something that catastrophic that they won't fail in the short term, let alone down the line, maybe another month or two, right? That's exactly where we are now. Um, it's possible that, uh, well, the damage from earlier has finally caught up to one or multiple components here. I don't know if that's what we're gonna find, maybe they're still okay. But that context is greatly appreciated because it will help me narrow down even further what is going on here. Where's the power button? Is that it right there? Let's see, apparently this shouldn't work. But it, but it does. Maybe what he meant was that the system powers on but doesn't post or send a signal to a monitor. So we're gonna test that here. The drive, according to the owner at least, has Windows installed on it, so if all is well, it should boot straight into that. Let's see, power button again. What? Okay. Uh, now we're talking. This rig is just totally unresponsive now. And you saw in the last clip, it powered on seemingly without issue. It might've even posted if we had had a screen connected but now it doesn't want to, and all we did was power cycle the system. And just as the owner described, we still have LEDs illuminated on the motherboard. So the platform is at least somewhat receiving power. That's probably a good sign. Now, since we're working with such an old case, it's possible that the power button itself 
has become uh, an issue. So we're going to bypass that entirely and manually jump the power pins on the board. This looks like a standard JFP1 header. Let's see then, uh, power on and Look at that, seems to fire up without issue now. Although we aren't getting any signal to our monitor, possibly a separate issue. We're gonna keep this in the back of our head. Although since power cycling this rig once more, it doesn't want to power off again. I've never seen this before. This is very strange. I'm jumping the power pins. Uh, it should be turning on and it is not but it looks like it's still receiving power. This is really bizarre. I believe this CPU has integrated graphics, so I'm going to bypass the discrete card entirely, so it'll give us a bit more room to maneuver around the base of the board as well. I have cleared the CMOS off camera. That hasn't fixed anything. I'll try uh, testing battery voltage, although that's usually a very niche issue. We're reading just over three volts, so nothing wrong here. And we've quickly removed memory from the equation because, well, I've literally removed it here and the system still will not power on. I did notice that this demo front panel connector is a bit odd and that it's actually two six pin layers stacked on top of each other instead of two five pins. And what it looks like they've done is for some reason jumped what would be in a normal JFP1 header, the power, it's actually a separate power LED pin. This is the positive pin. It looks like it's been routed to the negative terminal on the power switch side of things. Just really odd. And this was plugged in like normal. So on this board, he very well could have been running power where he shouldn't have. So that would be this pin here, which on this board is actually a power LED, separate power LED positive pin being jumped to this pin, which is the power button negative pin. I'm not sure what board was originally in here, but that is definitely not what should be happening. And because I don't know the pin array of the original motherboard in this Dell OEM, I'm not sure how dangerous the current setup is. I definitely wouldn't do what this owner did. I would have removed that jumper altogether. It's possible we have irreversible damage now on the motherboard side of things, which is not fun. But even with the front panel entirely disconnected, we still cannot manually jump the power pins, which is super odd. And uh, I've cleared the CMOS here. These two pins uh, should be jumped, should be closed to uh, bypass the battery uh, to uh, reset the CMOS. That's not working either. It's just peculiar. And I have even tried connecting one of these uh, speakers. I always get people yelling at me for not using these speakers. If it would focus, there it goes. Um, yeah, it just, it, these never work. I, I don't know why, they never make any sound. They, they're just not much help. Even with everything non-vital disconnected from the platform, we've only got the 24 pin and the 8 pin EPS being run to the board. It does not want to power on. That's not a good sign. It means we either have a power supply issue, which I doubt because it looks like we're getting power delivered and it sometimes does want to power on, or we have a motherboard issue. Uh, and this is an older board. I don't think I have a replacement, which means we'll have to order one on a site like eBay. We've tapped into the power supply and everything so far looks healthy here. Uh, slew rate, voltage, ripple, timings, all good so far. But even with a replacement power supply, just to calm the nerves and ease any doubts you might have about the tester, it still doesn't want to actually power on. Same symptom as before, we still get the LEDs on the board, but no real reaction when jumping the power pins. That means the platform needs to come out. This is when you know you've got an intensive troubleshooting task ahead of you. When you have to take the platform out, examine the socket, the CPU, you've uh, hopefully by this point exhausted all other resources and uh, well, I believe we have. I wanna first check and roll out this M.2. This is where Windows, I believe, is installed. I don't suspect it's the problem, but we're trying to just roll out as much as we can. And so far, everything looks okay. Now I wanna carefully take a look at the CPU and socket. We'll clean everything up and uh, we'll just make sure there aren't any bent or missing pins. Sure enough, the underside of the CPU looks spotless. No. Uh, bleeding over thermal paste or anything that would impede any of these pads from making contact with the socket. And the socket itself is also in immaculate shape, no bent or missing pins. But to rule out the CPU, I'm going to replace the current Core i7-9700 with my Core i3-9100F that I know works. And if the same symptoms are exhibited, then we can more or less rule out the CPU as the culprit. Although we could have a situation where both the CPU and the motherboard are dead, and that's the worst thing to physically troubleshoot. The hardware is usually pretty straightforward, but when you have multiple dead components, you're getting mixed signals from different combinations of hardware being connected. It's just like, you're just chasing yourself in circles sometimes. So I hope that at least his CPU is fine. We'll find out. I know the setup looks a bit sketchy. I had to connect discrete graphics because this is an F SKU, so it doesn't have an IGP, and I had to lift it off the board. Uh, I used a Q-tip box to do that, so. 
It's cringe. The CPU also doesn't have a cooler attached. We're not gonna leave it on long enough for that to matter, but uh, don't try this at home if you're not very familiar with tech. Here we go. Power on. So the board is lit. That's a good sign. And let's jump the power pins. Is it really powering on? It is? We might even get a post here. Wow, we did. We got a post? Okay. Uh, dead CPU? I'm a bit caught off guard by this, but looks like a dead CPU. Let's see if we can replicate this power on scenario because before we definitely couldn't. So here we go, jumping it again. It does. It powers on again. What, what is going on here? This is a, uh... okay, you know what? I'm gonna swap the original CP back in. I, I just, I just wanna see something. So now that's his 9700 back in. Uh, I've got the power now on at the rear and uh, let's try, sorry, I know the camera's just not gonna be pointing where I'm looking right now, but I just wanna see if we can get it to, and it, it responds. What, what on earth is going on here? The only two things we've changed between the system not powering on and it fully working and loading into Windows with both CPUs, mind you, are this. This is the boot drive, the M.2 that we removed earlier, and the case. Now you always wanna be mindful of potential shorts in cases like these. Sometimes these OEMs use unconventional motherboard shapes, but uh, this one actually uses the standard micro ATX layout. They don't use standoffs, they use these little indentions, uh, more or less in the uh, from the motherboard tray, they kind of pop out. But uh, nothing here that I would suspect is shorting the motherboard. Um, yeah, it, it all it all looks okay, even up top there. And while the Sim.2 does physically look okay, we haven't independently verified that this works in a different system. So what I'm gonna do is put this back in the original platform and see if we can power it on. I really doubt this is the solution, but I have seen weirder before. And here we go, two power pins. Okay. Well, that just um, that just makes it even more confusing. What? So, so it is the case. Is it the case? What else? We've changed nothing else about this rig. Could it be mounting pressure from the CPU cooler? I'm just, I, I have no idea where else to go from here. Heck, even with the original RTX graphics card pack in, we still get a post now. You see, I'm so stubborn now. I went ahead and reassembled everything inside of the case. We're gonna try jumping now. The only thing not reinserted is the CPU cooler. It's not turning on now. I thought it might've been a, a cooler mounting pressure issue, but it doesn't want to turn on. This board is, this gotta be shorting somewhere on the, in this case. 12 o'clock midnight. Oh, and you know what? I think I just found it. I was giving things another once over, just checking for any obvious areas where the motherboard might short. Actually, I was at the brink of replacing the case outright, which I didn't want to do because, well, that would ruin the sleeper aspect of this build, which I really like. Uh, so this over here is, I think, our culprit. Now, I'm gonna have to focus, ooh, let's see if I can focus through that hole there. That's gonna be pretty tough, but I think I might be able to pull it off. Do you see that metal piece that's sticking up? Wanna mark it there on the screen? That is literally touching a few solder points on the back side of this board. I believe it's the solder points for whatever this header is here. These pins are physically touching and you can even hear it. You can hear that clanking metal sound. That is the solder points making contact with the case. And this being a, a bare steel case means that it is definitely conducting, definitely shorting. And uh, well, this board somehow hasn't fried itself yet, which is a really good thing, but uh, that would definitely keep the system from powering on. See, a lot of modern components have not only surge protection built in, especially on the power supply side of things, but if they notice that power is being diverted somewhere it shouldn't, maybe something isn't receiving power when it should, that could be a trigger to keep the system from fully powering on. You can see the motherboard still getting power somewhat. It's getting low voltage power. This might be 12 volt uh, here. I'm not sure if these LEDs are 12 volt or five volt, but uh, either way, the system's not fully powering on and it's because of this little piece of metal here, which we can easily bend back. We may even be able to almost perfectly simulate this. So I've got only a single screw here at the top holding the board in, which means I can pry this board forward a bit so that it's not actually making contact with that uh, metal plate. Now let's power the unit on at the rear and let's see if it powers on now. I bet you it does. Look at that. 
That is exactly what was keeping this rig from powering on. And I guess somehow the viewer was able to get by for about a month or so with it not shorting and with the system working fine. But that right there is super alarming. And I'm really glad that nothing catastrophic happened as a result of that short. So let's go ahead and get this cooler reapplied. Then we'll remove the platform outright and work to bend this piece downward completely. We're gonna make sure that there's not a shadow of a doubt that this is not making contact with the motherboard. What follows is a brief construction montage. I could do the professional thing and take a Dremel to it, but that would take a lot of time for a case like this. I'm just worried about getting it out of the way. It won't be seen anyway. So now it's fully depressed inside of the motherboard tray and uh, even broke off a few pieces just for a good measure, like this one right here. Now we can carefully place the platform back in and button everything down, wire everything back up. I've created a makeshift front panel solution for the power switch by just connecting the blue wire to the black lead where it was supposed to go initially uh, and uh, also remove the extra black wire that was leading to a place it definitely shouldn't have gone. And here we are, the finished product, and it looks identical to the way it did when it entered the office. It's always a relief when a diagnosis does doesn't require replacement hardware. In fact, it only required a hammer, which, uh, well, that's a first. Well, okay, I shouldn't get ahead of myself. We need to make sure that, of course, everything works now as intended, including that uh, power button, which we had to rewire ourselves. Where is the HDMI cable? Plugging that in, and let's see what happens. Power at the rear is on, power up front. Look at that. Fires up straight away as it should. There we go. So looks like it's loading into Windows 11, judging from that animation. Come on. Come on, there it is. Check that out. <laughs> this has got to be one of the more fulfilling episodes I've ever filmed in this playlist. I'm, I'm super happy with the result, and I'm also super happy that it didn't require replacement hardware. Such a crazy, just random issue, and a pretty random fix as well, if I'm being honest. Who would have thought? Wow, what a way to kick off season five of Fixer Fall. I didn't expect this. I didn't expect it to be as complicated as it ended up being, uh, but also as simple as it ended up being. Some of these are just bizarre, and I'm, I'm frankly shocked that we haven't had an instance or two where it's like the same thing over and over for several episodes. It's, it's like almost always something different. And I think that is invaluable for, uh, for people who are watching these for educational purposes. I mean, some of you just like to watch because you wanna see me make a fool of myself and misdiagnose something, get it wrong, publish it, and then just look like an idiot. And I do that from time to time, sure. But uh, you know what, I'll go ahead and say it. I would be willing to bet against myself having fixed this a year or two ago. I have learned so much just from being hands-on with so many systems like these, um, I, I've, I've come a long way personally in, in the troubleshooting department. I've learned so much about systems and there's still so much more that I do not know. I might have even said stuff incorrect in this video. But you know, piece by piece, build by build, I'm improving. And uh, hopefully if you're watching and uh, you see an informative aspect of these videos, it at least keeps it fresh in your mind. If something were to happen to your system, you'd be super confident in being able to solve it yourself. This reminds me of, I think it was the end of season three of Fixer Flop. There was a build that came in, it used some older hardware, I think it was an X58 platform. And I could not for the life of me figure out what was wrong with that system. And I don't remember too much about it. It has been, I think a few years now, but I ultimately ended up giving up on that system. That was one of the few just complete flops in that playlist. And I remember telling the guy when I met him again at the Target parking lot, I said, hey man, I'm sorry. This is like, this is one of the few times when I've been completely stumped. And of course, when the video was published, a lot of you had opinions on how I could have handled that better. And I think the prevailing thought was that I didn't isolate the platform from the case. At least I didn't show it on video. Now there was a, a point in the video, I believe, where I had everything out on a desk and I was testing it, but by that point it was too late. See, some of you pointed out this standoff right here, which 
is really only used for some micro ATX motherboards. It shouldn't have been here for an ATX board, at least most ATX boards that you'll deal with today. And that I believe was shorting the platform. I think even the new replacement motherboard and CPU were fried because of that misplaced standoff. And it's because I didn't isolate the platform from the case at the time that I not only couldn't fix the problem, but also ended up bricking what I suspect were totally fine and working motherboards and CPUs in the process that I had ordered from eBay. It was an extremely frustrating episode and looking back, I'm just beating myself up over it because I could have fixed that guy's system and I didn't because I didn't know enough about isolating individual components. This took a while, but at the end of the day, we figured it out and it was almost an exact match to what we had at the end of season three. So. Um, I'm, I'm proud of myself for not overlooking that. I'm glad I gave things a second and third look. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's about all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this one. Did you hone in on the issue before me? Did it take you a little longer? Um, that feedback is, uh, is greatly appreciated. I actually really enjoy it. Within the first hour or two of these videos going live, seeing your comments, they're usually very encouraging um, and, 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 and constructive, which is great as well. If you guys haven't subscribed already, get subscribed. Check out our troubleshooting stuff in the description along with other relevant links. And I will catch you in the next. It is just past midnight now, so um, I'm gonna get some sleep. My name's Greg, thanks for learning with me.